Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I'm going to do something a bit different. I'll start in the past uh, before I speak about the current propaganda situation. So on January 17th, 1961, the 34th president of the United States of America, President Eisenhower, delivers his farewell speech to America. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Those words spoken over half a century ago by Eisenhower serves as a chilling reminder that his warning went unheeded. Ex-U.S. government staffers filled the ranks of private lobbyists, distributing the $285 million in campaign contributions and $2.5 billion in lobbying funds designed to influence defense policy over the past two decades. It goes without saying these are not charitable contributions. These are corporations with investors expecting a return on that investment. And these efforts continue to provide unimaginably lucrative returns. During the Iraq war, over $100 billion was passed around to military contractors. 39.5 billion of that going to Halliburton, the corporation that then Vice President Dick Cheney was the ex-CEO of, because this public sector slash private military contract revolving door naturally swings in every direction. The real winners of the Afghan war were, of course, also the military contractors, now recycling profits into think tanks globally, especially in Australia, driving public opinion and government policy by ramping up the China threat story. Hardly anyone seems any wiser to these recycled tactics, tactics and truly believe the negative sentiment towards China is completely organic. If the military industrial complex truly believed the current aggressive sentiment towards China could have been achieved organically, they wouldn't be pouring millions of dollars into these narratives and efforts. That would not be a good business decision. And these are businesses. When you actually zoom out on the China threat reports they produce, you find shocking errors, contradicting statements, mistranslated documents, and nonsensical stories covering the South China Sea to Xinjiang to Belt and Road sites across the globe and more. Foreign news outlets pick up and recycle the main talking points from these reports, and the public consumes it at face value. I won't debunk specific China claims today. I have plenty of content doing that elsewhere. And there are some people who just aren't ready to believe anything other than the mainstream media narrative on China. But even if you want to defy logic, taking these narratives at face value, and you want to believe everything you're being told about China, there's still sufficient reason to be terrified about how the entire information system works. I'll continue expanding on that now. Where else does the military industrial complex spend its money? Well, they also fund the Atlantic Council, the organization responsible for much of the censorship decisions made across social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Platforms who said they'd begin removing people for, quote, amplifying narratives that undermine faith in NATO, an imperialist war machine who also happens to be connected to the Atlantic Council. So now, in addition to funding narratives, they also have the capability to suppress content that risks undermining those narratives. Alongside military industrial complex funding, the U.S. government funds many of the exact same think tanks. You start to get an idea of what those lobbying funds can accomplish. A whole host of other elite corporations fund the same think tanks and engage in similar lobbying activities. These are corporations that engage in various forms of international exploitation and who rely heavily on American global hegemony, a hegemony in control of a heavily weaponized global currency, one that polices the world with an arbitrary rules-based system, and one that has regularly deployed the military to protect U.S. corporate interests abroad. It should all start to fit together at this point. This is a system that should terrify everyone. Perhaps there are some people unconcerned because they believe they are the beneficiary of this current world order. Make no mistake, the average person in the West is not a beneficiary of these wealth transfers that happen during these conflicts. On the contrary, it perpetuates a system where the wealth gap continues to increase at record levels, and there's a severe poverty problem on the rise. Convincing you that China's peaceful rise has not been peaceful, that they deserve to be smashed back down, that the status quo needs to be preserved, and America's position as world police and the sole superpower is something that you're meant is something that you're meant to believe, even in the face of proving over and over again to be poor custodians of that power. Moving to a multilateral world is a concept that shouldn't even be entertained, a frame of mind that's incredibly important for the ruling class and 1% to convince you of, and is exactly why these narratives are literally funded with hundreds of millions of dollars per year. Many Occupy Wall Street protest supporters now ironically support preserving the very system that keeps the 1% they wanted to fight against in power and or remain indifferent to this push that may lead us towards war. A war that will provide a valuable secondary benefit of deflecting your attention away from the real issues at home 
often caused by the same 1%, onto manufactured enemies abroad, which ironically serves the interests of a group of people you used to clearly recognize as a problematic ruling class with concerning amounts of power over society. Many who continually protested against their own American aggressions and wars who have not been able to make meaningful change have also been led to believe that if there's a choice between a single American superpower or a multilateral world where China is an equal, well, they'd, be, they'd better preserve the very system that they previously fought against, even though the accountability that comes in a multilateral environment could be the very thing that finally ends the kind of behavior they've always wanted to end. In the face of facts, that China doesn't do what America does, it doesn't interfere in the politics of foreign countries, overthrow democratically elected leaders, <clears throat> install dictators aligned with its geopolitical interests, assassinate foreign leaders, sanction children into starvation, continually bomb and invade countries. Being able to convince entirely reasonable and well-meaning people that America's exclusive hegemony needs to be preserved for the good of this world requires an incredible amount of propaganda. You've been lied to repeatedly with the purpose of manufacturing consent to engage in conflicts with so-called enemies that you first need to dehumanize. That, campa uh, that campaign of dehumanizing China has already begun. We don't like to believe we've been coerced into a position. We want to believe our conclusions were well-informed and of our own free will. Even if you want to believe that your feelings towards China are organic and a system the, the system which I have described comes with enough risks and conflicts of interest at play, and you've been lied to enough times to deserve warranting the need for you to look deeper and at the primary sources behind the current anti-China narrative. You'll be surprised by what you find. This isn't an easy effort, though. There's an overwhelming amount of propaganda that's gone into this, and it can be a bit daunting. So beyond playing this game of cat and mouse, constantly trying to determine if you're being misled into war, continually learning too late that you were indeed misled into wars predicated on lies, instead of waiting until it's too late to do anything about over and over again, start addressing the issues with the systems that allow the flourishing of deceitful narratives to begin with. I'll provide a couple of ideas, but I'm sure there are people with far more talent who, if made aware of these issues, could come up with even better solutions. Right. So the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 20, Paragraph 1 says any propaganda for war shall be prohibited by law. The US, Australia and UK haven't signed on to this. Maintaining the current global world order seems to often come with a need to wage war against anyone challenging that order, even if only peacefully. Wars have been waged against global South countries who simply didn't remember to stay in its place or who tried to nationalize resources being exploited by the US or its allies. Global North countries are Western liberal democracies for the most part, and these countries, more or less within reason, require consent of its people to wage war. Naturally, promising to not produce pro-war propaganda would be incredibly inconvenient to the corporately driven war machine. Given the conflict of interest and the context of continually be, being caught using false uh, pro-war propaganda, the US and its allies should be pushed to immediately ratify Article 20, Paragraph 1. Push your governments to commit to this. The average person doesn't have the time required to debunk every propaganda campaign towards each new target. And the people pushing false narratives especially narratives designed to manufacture consent for conflicts where many innocent people will inevitably lose their, lose their lives, needs to be held accountable. Prohibit the mechanisms that have been used and abused to continually sell the wars you end up finding out were built on lies. An argument against this measure is that it restricts free speech. Consider that if pro-war propaganda ends up leading you into an actual war, history tells us that far greater democratic freedoms are suspended during wartime. And this goes well beyond just free speech or new drastic uh, invasive programs like the Patriot Act. Consider also that even before that war begins, while those propaganda campaigns are going on, people already begin to lose their freedoms and ability to speak out. This also goes beyond just the obvious increase in hate crimes towards domestic populations resembling the new so-called enemy. Today, regardless if you're Asian, of, of Asian descent or not, just try going a bit too far in the other direction of this current propaganda push, especially if you're in a position of influence. You'll quickly learn that you're actually in the middle of a McCarthyism 2.0-like campaign against those who challenge key parts of the current foreign policy narratives and initiatives. You'll find out you didn't actually have the freedom to say whatever you wanted. It just so happened you were saying the things you were allowed to say. Allowing pro-war propaganda in your society comes with greater free speech consequences than disallowing that war propaganda to begin with. I've got plenty of examples of this, but I want to move on to something else that's just as important. The other obvious need is to make it illegal for military contractors to engage in any activities that will influence public policy or opinion. This is a deadly conflict of interest, and many people have paid for this conflict of interest with their lives. Consider that many Western countries have banned tobacco companies from advertising their, uh, their products because of the health consequences to their own citizens. 
I can't imagine anyone who considers this to be a reasonable ban wouldn't also consider banning a form of advertising that has led to the killing of millions of innocent people over the past few decades who had no choice in the matter whatsoever, oftentimes wiping out entire families. Advertising is propaganda. Propaganda is advertising. Tobacco propaganda, making it look cool with creative marketing and storytelling has become illegal in many developed countries because of health risks and concerns for their domestic populations. Pro-war propaganda isn't just creative storytelling. It's worse than tobacco ads in that it also introduces false advertising and also banned activity across other commercial industries with real consequences. Yet war criminals who sold us wars and who we now know outright lied about facts and stories and threats are not held accountable in any way whatsoever. There's no deterrent to stop doing this, and they keep doing this. Saying this kind of propaganda advertising comes with health risks would be an understatement to the millions of deaths who would have not been possible without these campaigns. You may not empathize with my less negative take on China. And you don't need to, but the mechanisms being used to promote aggressions and potentially lead us towards a catastrophic war, unlike anything we've seen before, with multiple red flags, documents, and systems being set up for this very prospect, are supported by propaganda mechanisms that should never be used for any target. If you think you never needed those mechanisms to feel the way you currently feel about China, push to abolish them. I'm convinced you'll suddenly realize how inorganic a lot of your feelings were. But even if I'm wrong, I think we can all agree there's something wrong with the system and it needs to be addressed either way. While Eisenhower's hands were not clean when it came to war, he recognized a dark path ahead and instead dreamed of a safe nation with checks and balances that present, uh, prevented influences that would lead America down that dark path. Unfortunately, we need to recognize that we found ourselves living in his nightmare. We're at a crossroads where America is pulling out of one conflict and preparing for the next. Now is the perfect time to reflect on what has just unfolded and push for change while this is at the forefront of our minds and before State Department stenographers slowly begin reshaping and reframing history yet again so that their perpetual war machine can continue getting away with this once again and with very little need to even come up with a new playbook. Under even ordinary circumstances where the brunt of consequences are felt by foreign populations in far off lands, with a select few of your sons and daughters who have been tricked into fighting for something other than what they signed up for, it should already be enough for you to demand change. But what we see brewing today before our eyes will have far greater consequences for all of us and our planet. If you don't, if you don't wake up now, when will you ever? The size of what we're potentially walking into now means that choosing to still not wake up today will come with severe consequences for what our children wake up to tomorrow. Thank you.